Getting the right white balance in your image is something every single photographer will struggle with. Finding the right balance between blue and yellow and getting the right tint between green and magenta, it can really affect your photo. So today I'll share with you one trick to get instantly better white balance in your photos just using Lightroom. And I'm gonna start right now. Now, like I was saying at the start of the video, white balance is one of those things that I know a lot of photographers struggle with. Finding the right white balance, especially if you've shot in auto white balance, can be incredibly challenging. But there's three things that we can do to actually improve our white balance and get perfect white balance within our photos. The first thing, and it takes a little bit of preemptive, is using one of these, and this is a grey card. Now what a grey card does is you've got a nice big grey swatch on one side and then you've got a bunch of colours on the other. This is more optional extra. What you do is you take a photo of this, set your white balance to the grey here because it's neutral, it doesn't contain any colours, create a preset from that and then basically copy that and paste it across the rest of your photos. The downside to it is you need to have one of these in hand and then actually use it within your photo shoot. And I know a lot of people either forget or simply don't want to buy one, but there's two other things that we can do to actually get better white balance. Let's take this photo here as an example. I really, really like it, but I do find that the color is a little bit warm. Now, if you didn't take a gray card photo, you wanna find something with it that's neutral within your image so then we can sample it to then get a better tone for it. And luckily, if we go ahead and zoom in, all of the ballerinas here, including the male ballerina, is wearing white. And white's perfect because although it uh, there's lots of colors reflecting around it, it will reflect a neutral tone. It's white, which is really handy. And it's great, same situation if you are a wedding photographer. So what we can do, open up your develop panel, go ahead over to the basics panel, and you see this little tool here? This is called your eyedropper tool or your white balance selector. If we go ahead and select it, what we wanna do is find something with a neutral tone in it. Now, if we look at the bottom of the targeted picker, you can see that we've got these numbers. And you've got R, G, and B, and that's your red, green, and blue. What you want to do, you want to hover over a color where it offers the same value across all three red, green, and blue swatches. So you wanna find a number that's roughly the same. So for example, here, you've got red of 90, green of 86 and blue of 79. So you can see that's not going to get us the right white balance. So if we move over here a lot closer, 95, 93 and 89. So what we're gonna do is find the color that offers the most neutral tone and here looks pretty close, 80, 76 and 69. They're within 10% of each other. So what we can do now is go ahead and click. As you can see, the whole photo has now been adjusted choosing that color as a specific hue. And we can see that although it's fixed most of it, it has got a little bit of a green color cast to it. So there's one more thing we can do to get better white balance, and that is to use the histogram. We actually discussed this in a previous video. The histogram is an incredibly powerful tool that I think a lot of people underutilize. Now in our histogram, it doesn't just show us your exposure, it also shows us the mixture of red, green, and blue within our images. We can see we've got a blue peak here, a green peak, and a red peak, all hidden within this section here. And what we want to do to get the right white balance in our images is to basically match these three peaks up together, giving us the right balance of red, green and blue. And we can do that by going to our temperature and tint slider and moving those around until we're getting better overall outcome. And what I might do is go for something like so. So we can see that all three of these peaks match up all at one point, giving us the absolute perfect white balance in our image. Now, although this is, I would say, the correct white balance, creatively, it's not something I necessarily would go for. I'd probably end up with a slightly warmer tone. But if you need the absolute perfect white balance in your photo, firstly, if you can, use a grey card. Secondly, use the colour picker tool and try and find the most neutral tone within your image. And if that still hasn't worked, simply go to your histogram and try and get the best results by matching the red, green, and blue channels within your photo. If the white balance that doesn't fully work, you can actually use the curves adjustment layer to get even closer. But that's a little bit more of an advanced tip that I might discuss in a later video. But hopefully those three tips will get you better overall white balance in your images. Here is the before and here is the after. And if this particular tutorial helped you out, make sure to write it down in the comments below.